Hold on everyone, you join me at my friend Aaron's which is uh, TH Flurry. Um, we've been here in the past but we haven't for a while and Aaron's been really busy because it's now his own business. Um, so we're doing the usual coming down out of hours and uh, harassing him to help me with some, some wiring and a, that kind of thing because it is an auto electrics business. And we've got a new stereo and some new speakers because that was one of my complaints with this car. Um, so when I'm driving it, um, the, the drive side door speaker doesn't work at all. Um, and it's just a little bit annoying really. And I thought obviously if we're gonna change the speakers, I'll change the front too. The rays are all good. And the head unit is extremely dated. So I'll, I'll show you that in a second. Um, it does sort of fit with the aesthetic of the car, but I think just with me using it as a daily driver, I, I think something a little bit more modern is, is a bit more suitable. So for a quick run through what we've got, um, of course the head unit. Uh, this is a Mechless unit from JVC. Uh, the importance of this really is that obviously without having a CD unit and stuff, the insertion depth is much less, um, which is an issue with these cars because there's very little space because of where it's mounted. Um, and I looked at various different options and it, it seemed like this one made the most sense. I think it's sort of in terms of fit and its uh, features, which are pretty important. Um, it does do does do DAB and Bluetooth play, Bluetooth call in, and it's, uh, it's made for, it's got the made for iPod, iPhone thing. So it will charge whilst playing music and just sort of do all the, all the stuff you'd expect from from a bit more of a modern head unit and the, the current one um, is a, an old school tape deck so it's, uh, it's going to be a big big step into the future I think. Um, in terms of door speakers, um, I got these, these Alpine ones. Uh, the door speakers are pretty small. Um, there's varying levels of trim with these cars and I believe that uh, was like a HK upgrade with, with multiple speakers so there was like two in the door and then I think it ended up being a seven speaker setup instead of just the four that's in this model. It's not a huge deal. Um, I think I'll be I'll be quite content with with these and the the rears which are working really well. And we've got some ISO connectors because we need to splice everything in and make it fit with the wiring for this car. And that's why we have Aaron because I um, although everything's labelled, I think I'd, I'd much rather use a professional auto electrician and do a nice job. So. We'll jump into the inside and I'll show you what we're ripping out. The door speakers are a, a fairly simple affair. It's just, just four screws to remove them and they're just basically like a spade connector. Um, it's the driver's side that's not working at the moment, but um, we're obviously going to replace the pair of them. Just They're just like an old school, what is it, like filament or something, the old old school speakers? Are. Like paper. Yeah, it's, it's, like, it's basically just paper and I, I, it's most likely torn, So, um, the, but they're not, they're not the best quality anyway, being 30 odd year old. So that's going to be an easy one and the head unit itself is uh it's pretty old school so it's a goodman's tape deck it does have aux um which is the reason why i didn't instantly change it but um yeah it's i think it's ready for the ready oh, to go in cool feature it's got a cool um rook. it's very easily removable and it's got a nice little carry handle so you can um take it with you so it doesn't get robbed So I think Aaron's found the problem. This is a sign of a bass junkie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's been it's been solidly bumping out the tune since the nineties, hasn't it? And it's uh, it's finally failed. Deja vu. So as you can see with these going in, you can just use the OEM covers and you don't really lose lose the look. So I'm happy with that. Um, that's a really super easy job because it's you're not really having to adjust any wiring like you would with a modern car because they just come with the spade connectors that go straight onto the speakers anyway. So what we've got here really is just sort of modified spliced into the original harness um, and they are all labelled so I, I could have probably took my time and figured it out but 
Aaron will probably do the job a hell of a lot quicker than what I would and we're also going to take an ignition live from here because um, it doesn't have one for some reason um, so the radio was quite easy to leave on by accident and I did do that a couple of times so um, and then yeah so Aaron's going to splice that all into these um, ISO which is it's just basically a standard for everything though isn't it so um, sh shouldn't be too difficult any you common left is green so we've got this um fortunately the old head unit still has the, the wiring instructions on the back that's rear, rear left, left. Yeah. uh the rear right is brown Snip a bit off there. It's rear right. So I need to connect to the rear right. So I need to find the right common, which is common right speaker is blue. If we put an F, put an F on these two. Sorry, not them two. That one, and that one. Like that. And orange. Where's the rear left? Yep. yep. And brown was the rear right. Rear right's working. The right's working, so front right was grey. So now this is the one that was giving us the problem. There's no circuit. So there's a wiring fault somewhere between here and the there. Door, which isn't very far, but it's not really what we needed. We'll just check the front left, even though we know it's working, we've got a circuit. Yeah. So rear, the front right door speaker is still not working. The front um, right door speaker's got a wiring fault somewhere from here to there. So I'll have to try and track that down. We've, um, well, Aaron's finished the, the wiring side of things. Um, it was fairly straightforward, really. We found the wiring fault for the speaker. It was in the... Yeah, so just, just down underneath this kick plate where the speaker comes through, um, there was a, the bullet connectors had pulled apart. Um, Aaron oh. famously said just before that that he doesn't like bullet connectors, and then that turned out to be the fault, so... Got it all wired in. Um, we double checked that it holds its memory. Um, one of the common faults is when people fit radios, the, it won't hold its radio memory, and it's a really simple fix. You just swap the power supplies around, um, and that'll fix the, the issue. Um, but other than that, it's a straightforward radio fit. Um, it's ran his Bluetooth microphone cable through. The aerial connector didn't need any adapters, thankfully. Uh, all hooked up. And it's going in. If it'll fit. You might have to push the wiring out the way maybe, but... Mm -hmm. We're in. But that is it done. Um, we've tested it and it, it works. The Bluetooth audio works, calling works. Um, and it's just a lot more convenient. Obviously, it do, I mean, it, it looks modern, but I don't really have a problem with that. I think there are some bluetooth sort of ready head units that kind of look retro and it it, it might have worked but um the main concern with this was obviously the the insertion depth being mechless and stuff so i knew this would work and i'm glad that it has so it's a nice easy job for the range um Aaron. Oh yeah. Oh.